Chicanos por la Causa Parenting Arizona promotes strong and thriving families through parent education, multicultural family support, and community collaboration. Joining me to talk about CPLC Arizona is Julie Rosen, Executive Director of CPLC Parenting Arizona. Julie, thanks for joining us on Horizonte. My pleasure. Uh, give us a, a, a quick history of Parenting Arizona. Well, Parenting Arizona uh, was taken over by, was really acquired by CPLC in 2004. Prior to that, it was Parents Anonymous. In 2004, we've been working to really incorporate ourselves in other parts of the state and make a, a huge difference for families. And as I understand it, it's been around for 34 years. Yes, that's right. We have a long history. We've been around since 1977, but we've been part of La Familia since 2004. And you're the executive director? Yes. Give us a sense for for the geographic areas that are served by Parenting Arizona. Parenting Arizona serves a lot of the state. We're in Tuba City, Winslow, Flagstaff, and many cities up in the Navajo Nation. Cayenta, Ganado, Fort Defiance, Window Rock, Chinle. We also go out east a little bit to Holbrook and Joe City. So in Maricopa County is about half of our business and we go all the way from Globe to Wickenburg. So it's a very large part of the state. And we talk about uh, business, how many families do you serve? Every year we touch up to 30,000 families, in, including our direct care and our outreach. In terms of the actual individual families that we provide comprehensive services to, it's 5,000 families a year. And what kind of resources do you have to provide those services? We predominantly do four different types of services. One is home visitation, and up in the Navajo Nation, we go into the homes and deliver uh, prevention programs. Predominantly, we teach three things. The importance of uh, positive parenting, the importance of early childhood knowledge, and the third one is the importance of literacy. We're really trying to get kids to really learn to read. We do those three services in four different settings. One is the home visitation. The other setting is community-based. So we deliver classes at different types of uh, libraries, domestic violence shelters, homeless shelters. We do it at Fresh Start. We do it all over the valley with different collaborators that we have. So there we're teaching the class to the parents in the community. And we also have resource centers in the school and in the community. We have one in Guadalupe. We have four in Flagstaff, one in Loop, Arizona. And those resource centers basically have the exact same mission child development knowledge, positive parenting, and early literacy. Those are the three things that we're really doing to prevent child abuse from going on. And, and that really is ultimately the goal, right? Exactly, exactly. We want to do two things. One is to give families the tool they need to really have healthy, thriving children that are ready to read when they start kindergarten. The reason that this is so important is that if we have readers by third grade, their high school graduation rate is very high and then they'll move on to college. That third grade reading level determines so many factors in a child's life. Our job is to really get them ready to read when they start kindergarten, but if they're not prepared by kindergarten, they're not going to hit the benchmark of third grade, which means that their chances of high school graduation drops dramatically. Now, in terms of the importance of the work you do to prevent um, uh, child abuse, you and I talked a little bit off camera about a recent fatality report that, that really illustrates the need. Yes. Every year, the state of Arizona produces a fatality report that identifies every single child that died in the state of Arizona. CPLC Parenting Arizona is interested on the section that talks about deaths related to maltreatment. Maltreatment is a death that can be preventable and that happens at the, at, 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 as a result of murder, really. It's some type of a neglect or, or if you will, uh, just a fatality. And, and most of these by parents, sadly. That is the saddest part of the whole report. A lot of times when people think about child abuse, they think, oh, it's the boyfriend, it's the lost uncle, it's someone else. We know for a fact that 87% of all fatalities in 2012 were at the hands of biological parents. 60% were the mother and 27% were the father. These are the actual biological parents of the child. That's why the work that we do is so important. We are giving these parents the tools that they need to really make a dramatic shift in the way that they're parenting. 
a lot of times parents learn how to parent from their parents. And if they grew up in poverty with substance abuse, with domestic violence, that becomes so ingrained in their brain that they think that's normal. So our job is to intervene with high risk families to really turn that around and give them the tools that they need. And you touched on, on some of the problems that, that can lead to child abuse. Substance abuse is one of them. Yes. I think you, you, you've mentioned in the past um, teenage pregnancy. How, how, how do you deal with those issues? Well, one of the things that we do is we continually educate the parents on the importance of child development knowledge. If they know that when they need it, then their expectations are going to be realistic. We make a lot of referrals. We work with a lot of partners that address the substance abuse, that address the domestic violence. Our scope is giving them the tools that they need to raise healthy kids that are ready to learn. And that's what we do through those five or six different methods that I mentioned earlier. Let's talk briefly about funding. It's a big issue right now with, with the it problems at, at CPS. Where, did, where does CPLC get its funding? How big is your budget? How many people do you employ? We have a, a, a about a $3.2 million annual operating budget that covers all the services. With that money, we have 50 team members that are providing services to these 30,000 families across the state of Arizona. In addition to that, we also have 69 volunteers that help promote the mission and that work with us to really advance the cause. About half of our funding comes from First Things First. We're very grateful to the funding that they have been able to offer us. This is tobacco revenue, and they um, are an initiative that was voter approved in 2006 and has done just a fantastic job really making an enormous difference in early childhood education. About uh, the other half of our funding, I would say, comes from the uh, DES, from the state of Arizona. They fund our services. The services that they fund are also prevention services, but some are treatment services, where we work with families who have already been involved in CPS. The bulk of it, however, is really preventing the abuse from occurring. That's the main thing that we do. The funding is definitely something that is constantly at risk because prevention programs are the first to be cut. In 2008, there was a very large financial crisis in Arizona, and our programs were slashed in half in 24 hours. I couldn't believe it. I remember being on the call, on the phone all but, day. But you've since recovered. We have recovered. And, we and have speaking recovered. of funding, and, and, and we're going to have to wrap up the interview, but I know it's that time of the year when another important source of funding is available, yes. and that's the tax credit. Yes, yes. Arizona is lucky to have a working poor tax credit this year for the first time ever. Folks can contribute to a qualifying charity, which CPLC Parenting Arizona is a qualifying charity, and you don't have to itemize. That's the best part about the Working Poor Tax Credit. An individual can donate $200, a married couple can donate $400, and so it is on, literally on that, a credit. No, we're going to have to wrap up, but hopefully it will generate a lot of donations. Thank you so Thank much, you so much Jose. I appreciate it.